forward. And then I'm just going to do an introduction. I'm Medi Ivy. I do writing mentorships. And this is my friend, Melanie Jacobson, who is an awesome author and event um, organizer. Yes. And we, she, you're agreeing to me recording you to do sort of a sample um, of what I would do for uh, clients or mentees in my mentorship program. So I do video chats weekly with them. I read what they've written for that week, give them daily kicks in the pants and generally help people figure out what's going on in their head that's keeping them from writing. But I also try to help with writing skills. So, and just trying to like troubleshoot what's going wrong. And in your particular situation, you have this suggestion from an agent about what you should do. Is it an agent or an editor? It's my agent. Your agent wants you to cut to the um, car. Wait, the it's a car trip book. Roger. Mm -hmm. you, and you, you don't start the car trip until 47 pages in and your agent says that you should um, move to that more quickly. Am I summarizing that correctly or is there that on there. Yeah, that's correct. And the thing is that so um, I have a critique group where everybody's either um, published or agented. So we meet every single week. They have seen every single chapter of this book. Um, I hired a couple of um, developmental editors to go through the first hundred pages to make sure they're really tight. Um, I have a pretty good revision instinct, I feel like, most times. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a YA contemporary novel. It's coming in at about 85,000 words. She wants 50 pages cut out, so 300 pages to 250. And she feels like the road trip is starting too late. But to me, it's starting on page 47 of a 300 page novel and the entire rest of the novel, they're on the road trip. So um, none of the other people who have looked at it have had that same feedback, but she's looking at things with an eye toward the market and like right. what she knows editors are gonna ask for. And I, I can't, as much as I spent the first two weeks after she told me that pouting and discounting it, I really can't discount it. And so um, I, I just, the thing is, I am a really good reviser. I am. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not married. I believe you. You've published. Yeah. You know, like I'm not books, married so. to these like precious things, but like, I'm, so, I just, this is how, this is a visual representation of how I feel every time I sit down and open the revision. Right. Right. You're stuck. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't. So I, I, I have only seen the first 10 pages, but mm -hmm. let me just say to you from the first 10 pages, what I'm, what I feel like is going on in terms of your resistance to the idea of cutting. Okay. okay. So my sense from the first 10 pages is that the idea of family is, I, I assume that that's what triggers the road trip. She gets a DNA test and ends up finding out that she has a relative somewhere. And so she goes on a road trip with her friend to find this relative. Okay. So. Right. Um, and the first chapter of the book has nothing about her family in it. It's all about her friend's family because she idolizes them and they're cute and great together. And so she doesn't think about her own family, whatever the problems in her own family are. I don't know what they are because I've mm -hmm. only read the first 10 pages. Um, so my sense is that one of the reasons that you're resistant to just chopping off a bunch of this is that you are setting up the reasons why family is so important to her you're, you're setting up why she has to go on this road trip right 100%. Mm -hmm. okay so i get that um but i will also say that for me reading the first 10 pages there were two different problems that i had one was um, that it didn't feel like there was in those first 10 pages, um, a strong plot element. It felt a little bit, um, like these characters are just, are sitting around having a conversation mm -hmm. and you're doing a lot of character development, mm -hmm. but 
um, and you're setting stuff up, you're setting stuff up with with the DNA test and you're setting up um, the flip side, this um, uh, Instagram social media account, right? Account account that she's, that she's gone viral. Right. That's gone viral, but you're setting that up. But let me point out that and you've, you've, I'm sure you've heard this and you probably have had people in your group ask you to um, talk more about her, um, her Instagram account where she's doing these stories because you reference them, but you don't actually have a dialogue, a scene of her doing one of these. Mm -hmm. So let me just ask you, what, what do your, uh, what does your circle of friends say about trying to do that? If you have already done it, what happens when you do it? So I ended up writing a series of like 10 or 12 transcripts of what the, um, what happens with some of these different, um, cause it's, it's, it's kind of like a YouTube Instagram thing. And, um, so I set up the transcript so you could go inside the scene of her doing this and they were coming like every third chapter. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the response has been, and I wrote them after I wrote the rest of the book and then went back and weaved them in. And the response has been, oh, these are really cute and funny, but they don't necessarily, like this isn't what's pulling me through the story. So those are an easy, like 4,000 words to lose right off the top. And my agent felt the same way. She was like, I mean, they're fine. She's like, I don't know the ads. It doesn't, she's like, I don't know if it's really doing anything for me. Um, but you're also correct that there's still this whole like, but we need to see what this Instagram thing is. So I took one of those transcripts and I actually turned it into a live scene in chapter two, okay. where um, you can see them actually filming a thing and you understand how it all works and you get the main character's dynamic when she's working with her guests. Um, so that is in there. Okay, so, so now my next question is, what is the plot end in terms of her Instagram thing, her account? Does, is that a big plot driver through the whole book? Is on her, her, her car trip, is she stopping everywhere she goes to have one of these things so she can put it up? And, and then what's the end point of that? So her inciting incident comes in chapter two where mm -hmm. she gets the DNA results and discovers this um, right, right. These three half siblings, right? So um, it takes her until, so like in chapter three and four, she's kind of stressing about like, I've gone viral, I'm running out of content, I don't know what to do. And then she decides, you know what? I'm gonna do a road trip to go meet these siblings and that'll make great content for mm -hmm. my social media platform, which she wants to parlay into um, some financial success so she can fund college and all of that. So, um, so it all eventually gets there. And then throughout the trip, and I think I heard a problem when I said the word eventually, but throughout the trip, she, um, she does uh, record this and talk about that. And, and um, you see her do a few different like, um, like actual uh, things for her social media thing. By the end of the trip though, so she goes on the trip thinking that what she really wants is um, to maintain her social media fame because it's an it's an end to her goal of college far away from her dusty little steel town um, but of course by the end of the story she realizes that's never what she really wanted um, it was just an excuse she gave herself um, because what she really craved was connection with family because it's just her and her mom and she loves her mom but she's felt very distant from her over the previous two or three years and she feels like going in search of family will help her figure out like, what is me? What is my mom? And her mom has told her a completely different story about who her biological father is. And so um, she's unraveling family secrets as she goes. And she's really, she's looking for family. And at the end, she finds it, but it's one of those, she had it all along. She was, it's just kind of family is who you love and who chooses to love you like that's kind of that's the big lesson at the end but for her she really thinks it's this she's wrong about her goal she figures right, out right. It's something totally and, different and and a character being wrong about their goal is fine right. I, mean, I mean that's obviously part of the process 
But I am wondering, and, and I, like I say, I've only read the first chapter, but I've started wondering from the very first chapter if, you may not want to hear this, <laughs> but if the whole Instagram going viral thing is a distraction from the real story. The real story is about family and it's not about going viral. And I know, I mean, it's a YA and you want something in a YA that speaks to a modern audience. Right. So I understand the desire to have it in there. But to me, the problem with the, with the beginning isn't um, that you need to get to the road trip faster. It's that I feel like the beginning is distracting me from the real story. Like the whole part about the viral, I'm, I am just not interested in that as a reader. I, I am interested in her relationships with people. And I don't know if she should start with her friend's family or if she should start with her own family. I, I wonder if maybe just chapter one should go and she should start with the DNA test. But but I'm I'm willing to say like we, we, we need to set things up. And generally when I talk to writers, I tell them like, go back. Like mm -hmm. instead of cutting more, I'm like, no, we need to, we need to care about this character before stuff starts happening. See, and that's um, the problem because yeah. I did used to start with the DNA test in chapter one. Mm -hmm. Like the very first thing you see is a line that says, Kindle barrels, your DNA results are in. And so you see her going through this process of like, do mm -hmm, I want to mm -hmm. know? Do I want to check this? And the constant feedback was, I don't, I'm not invested enough in her to right. care about this. So for me, when I look at a lot of um, developing writers in first chapter boot camps and things like that, I see so many stories that open with car wrecks. I don't know if yep, this is yep. you, but so because this is a or battle scene scenes in fantasy. Yes. Yeah. 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 And yeah. So I, I'm like, I don't care. Like, right. I don't know. I totally why does it you. matter to I'm me totally if this you. person so, dies? Like, I don't care. And so, so that's, that's why I'm asking, like, yeah. maybe what the problem is, is the whole going viral. Like, it's not, it's not such an easy solution as like cut off the first mm -hmm. 30 pages, but I don't know, reconsider well, how I important have... that is. It, 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 does your agent want to sell the book because of that one thing? Is that not something you can take out? Well, it's, it's funny that you're saying that because I would say feedback that I've gotten along the way has been like, um, it's almost like I'm trying to shoehorn the viral thing in because that's what happened because I just knew I wanted to tell the story of a girl who discovers that she has these DNA relatives and I wanted to look at the idea of what family is and how we shape our identity through family or not and, and all of those things, but like I didn't know what her jumping off point was. So mm -hmm. in thinking of, okay, what's a young audience? What's current? What's interesting to them? I have teenagers in my house. I'm like, oh yeah, they're always super interested in what's going on with like influencers. You know, they always, they have these accounts that they love. So maybe that's my way into the story because the, the point of the story is she's uncovering a family secret and she's meeting these DNA relatives but I couldn't, I, I couldn't figure out how to get there because starting there did not work. Right. Because of the whole, starting I, I with don't the care. DNA test doesn't work. Yeah. Like I, it doesn't. So what it was like, she didn't have enough of a, cause I, I am a person who is very comfortable writing characters who just wander around and see and do things. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I like character driven books. I'm a character driven writer, but I need, especially in a YA, this character has to have a lot of agency, even if she's charging in the wrong direction. Like she needed to have a positive goal, not like I'm getting away with something, but she's working towards something. And I, I mean, I was probably stumped for a year um, before I figured out the way into the story was maybe that hook. I tried and discarded so many things hmm. um, because initially, actually the point of this story was the, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, it's what this story is about now is her figuring out what family really is. And so, um, no, I, I get, got that from the first chapter. The social media can come out. It absolutely can. And the, and saying that to you makes me realize that's a problem. 
Because if I'm realizing yes. like I can cut it and yes. most of this book still lives. That's what I'm getting at. It makes sense. That the social media isn't integral to her yeah, other journey. You're right. Now, if it were integral to her other journey, I you couldn't suggest taking it out. Um, and, and so it, in my mind immediately starts thinking of like, what are the ways that you could make this book so that it is part of her integral journey? What if it's not the DNA test? What if it's not a road trip that sets her off on this? What if it's something that she's doing while she's doing this viral thing and someone contacts her and says, I'm, I'm your half sister. What if it's on the other end? I, I'm not saying that that's the answer to this question, but I am saying that these two plot lines that you have are not, they don't have to go together and I feel well, like they need to have to go together I want to say that the social media thing is a device but really it's a gimmick it was just me trying to figure out how to like get her on this road trip yeah um, because I didn't want her to have the realization that what she was looking for at first was family like she doesn't it's one of those things that like it becomes obvious to her by the end and as a reader we intuitively understand that but I couldn't have it be like I don't know like she can't she you don't want to her to go out. on this journey because she's like I need family right? right but there are other ways that you can set it up so that there could be her mom could ask her to go um her I mean, I'm sure you know how to brainstorm <laughs> like other reasons that could set her on this path that would not complicate the story in quite the way that I feel like this is complicating the story and adding words that don't that end up feeling like they don't matter. That's all. Right. It's just she discards this anyway. Right. So maybe she could discard something that doesn't take up so much, so many pages. Yeah, because honestly, like it's it's interesting that you're saying that because like her identity is 100% bound up in, I'm practically an orphan in this world, right? Yeah. And she comes to realize that she, she isn't and never was. Her identity is not at all bound up in her social media. Right. Now, part of that for me is my resistance to that idea at a personal level. I just don't, it doesn't speak to me to be like, I don't feel like I can have a character that's real if her whole thing is like, so that's probably why it doesn't feel integral to her character is I just don't, mm -hmm. I'm not invested in a character who defines herself that way. <laughs> so that's probably why it's not feeling organic. Mm, that's very I mean, interesting. I, the first chapter, one of the things that, one of the things that I felt like I was missing and, and you're being a little cagey about her, how she feels interacting with her friend's family. Mm -hmm. um, you, it's clear that she's jealous of her friend's family and how close they are, but she never says anything about her family. And I never hear her internal monologue say, why won't they just let me play with the baby? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, they get to play with her all the time. She just sort of lets it go. And she doesn't internally like co comment on that, on why she wants that so much right um but that i mean i really think you could play with that that's a deep aching need of hers that she, her friend has this and her friend like the whole friend's family is just like juggling everything around the baby and it's all it's not like it's easy for them but they don't see her need right like, to them, they're just like, oh, you're part of the family. Like it's exactly. all, it's all obvious. Mm -hmm. And, and if she, I'm like, you could have an opening chapter where she could bring it up with them. Like, I can't, can, can I just babysit the, the baby? Like, can you just let me And there? And they could, they could respond to her and that could set us up. I don't know that you need this other thing to, to get us in. I don't think you need a gimmick. I think that this is a deep story. And I mean, here, I'm going to, I'm going to plug for a story for the ages. Like, um, this story could have been written, I mean, without, I know the DNA test wouldn't have been possible in the 60s and 70s, but the story about finding family is, is, is an ageless story. And it is a story that in 100 years from now, without the Instagram and everything else in it, will still be current. It's like, I, 
I, I would say to you, like, write that story, write the story that in a hundred years, people will pick it up and be like, this is how humans are. This is a human story. And it's not even a teenager story. Although you're targeting a teenage market. I don't, I'm not suggesting that you change your market, but I mean, I, I don't, I, I just feel like you're, <sighs> So Rick, do you you know you know Rick Walton, right? Uh, Rick I used to have mm -hmm. Rick used to have this um, a set of of things that he would do to try to get people writing, and one of them that I remember clearly was um, take the first line of your favorite book, write it down, and then just write a different story based on that first line. And it was just his way of getting people to stop being afraid of the blank page. Like just mm -hmm. like we're going to accept you're stealing someone else's idea. And you're just going to take it in a completely different direction because that's what every author does <laughs> like we all nobody's ideas are original so let's just like say that's what we're going to do and then he would say so write your story and then go back and delete the first line <laughs> so i feel like that's what i'm telling you in this it's like that gimmick got her on the way and now i'm saying now go back and delete the first line and i know you've put in a lot of effort this is the sunk cost fallacy that we always have to deal with as writers like you've you've been through this draft and you've done research and everything but i just don't think it's serving your story which is not about instagram i think you are right but actually taking it out again is not as hard as it sounds oh. because again it was never because as it was never integral <laughs> as it should have been so there are lots of moments where I'm like trying to make her do a, a uh, you know, a, a, an Instagram thing or whatever, but um, it like, they can all come out. I think then what I'm lacking, so um, are you familiar with Martine Levitt and her work at all? I, I know her, I, I don't know if I've read, I, I mean, I've read some of her novels, but uh, I, I don't know if she has a book on writing, but I haven't read she it. Does she does not, but she was oh, my okay. advisor when I went to the Vermont College of Fine Arts for my MFA. <gasps> Oh, and okay. so I um, had the opportunity to do an intense like two week generative workshop with her there in Vermont. And one of the things that she talked about, and I, I can't unsee it now that she's pointed it out, but it's actually a great thing is um, she talks about how your character needs to start with a concrete object of desire. Like this is the yeah, thing yeah, that, yeah. They that they need. And then of course, by the end, they've reached a completely different conclusion. But it's that concrete object of desire. It, it, in, if you look at the kind of the hero's journey model, like the call to action is sending mm -hmm. the hero in, in search of that. So that's the piece that I lose when I take yes. out the, um, the social media is like, what is the call to action? What does she think she needs? What if she's um, just going she's to visit a college? What if she's just going to visit a college um, to see if she wants to go there? I'm just saying there there are a dozen things that could get her on this road journey that are right. simpler. Um, uh, a job interview. Um, uh, her friend could say, I want to go, uh, let's just go on a road trip and have fun. Like right. her friend, her friend could have this opposite desire. Like she's sick and tired of her family and wants to get right. away from her family. Her friend could motivate that trip. Um, and then they just sort of happen to do this along the way. I don't know. I, I think there are a bunch of different things. I, I, I don't mean to tell you how to write your story, I, but I, I feel like I'm partly just reflecting to you what you are saying to me, which is, oh, yeah, that's not, it's not an integral part of my story. And it doesn't hurt that much to it's take it out. How did I work on this book for two years? And I'm just now going like, oh yeah, that's not actually integral. Well, I mean, oh, that's so funny. How about how about I just say because I'm brilliant? <laughs> and yes, it can be because you're. But you know what's so funny about this is actually the whole kernel for this story had nothing to do with any of the things that are currently in it except for one, which is, are you familiar with a social media account called Humans of New York? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love it. And um, probably four years ago, there was one that ran and it had a teenage boy and girl sitting on a bench in Central Park. And it's the girls talking and she tells a story about how they went to the same elementary or same middle school. And she always kind of had a crush on him, but they ended up at different high schools, but they would still text. And she just thought, I'm always going to be like the friend. He's never going to be into me. But yet he would make a point of sending her a picture if he had to dress up in a suit to go somewhere. And she's like, sometimes I would get really brave and I would send hard eyes. And then one day, 
okay, we agreed to meet at the Starbucks that was by his orthodontist because it was near her. Um, and they're sitting on the park bench and she thinks that he's bored, but he flips a coin and then he leans over and he kisses her. And the very first comment in the comment thing had like, I don't know, tens of thousands of likes on it. And this guy said, all important decisions in life should be made by the flip of a coin. Not because the coin will give you the right answer, but the moment uh -huh. that it's in the air before it lands, you'll know what you'll you know. really want. Yes. And that's such a truth for me. Like that is a lived truth for me. And so immediately in my head, I saw the end of a novel where we've got a boy and a girl and they're flipping a coin. And, um, um. and then, and, and, and I saw the whole thing. So I was like, I got to write the novel to get there. And so it went through all these different, different iterations. Mm. And initially I wrote 40, 30,000 version words in a version where, um, they're going to go on a road trip where they're flipping a coin at every fork in the road to decide. Uh, and, uh -huh, then, uh -huh. well, and I literally had Google maps open. I picked a place for them to start. I would follow left and right. It, it was fun, but it didn't work for a story. Right. Um, you know, I had her in one version where she was like, uh, her dad has a terrible ver um, relationship with his mother. And then one day his mother's ashes show up at the house and he throws them in the garbage and she fishes them out and decides she's going to go on a trip to bury them. But she's got to flip the coin to figure out where they should end up. Like, and none of these things were, um, they didn't make her proactive enough. She didn't want anything badly enough. Yeah. It was sort of whimsical. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so she was being driven by the action of the coin rather than her own choices. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? But yet I still wanted to keep this quarter element in it. So slowly over time, it ends up morphing. And I give her this like, she wants to be a social media influencer, but due to my own internal resistance against the idea of like, I just don't love the whole social media influencer vibe. Um, I was like, but it's going to be for a more important reason. She wants to become a social media influencer so she can pay for college to get out of this dusty steel town. But like, you forget that she's from a dusty steel town by chapter three. Like, you never remember that. And every mention of like, she wants to go to NYU or she wants to make her account viral, it still feels shoehorned in because ultimately what took over the story was this idea of... Um, DNA versus found family, like what is family? How do you, all those things, like I have come to love that part of the story so much. Um, so it, I mean, the, the important thing about the coin flip is not that it's a coin flip, but that when it's in the air, you realize mm -hmm. what you want. Yeah. And so, yeah. And, so you have to have a character who, right. So there's several does have something in the story where they're flipping a coin to decide something um and it happens in the very last chapter as well so it happens um the coin flip is what sends her on like she flips the coin and decides to open the dna results and then that unfolds all kinds of revelations which you as the reader think you know oh okay so her mom lied and this is the truth and there's a whole other lie underneath that that gets uncovered at the very end and you don't even kind of see it coming until you do um and then so we've got the coin flip at the beginning we end with a coin flip as well um family is always important from start to finish but social media is just it's a hook to hang a hat on it so and that's not i mean the, the real gimmick is the coin flip so yeah. i i also might suggest that you begin the first the first chapter with some kind of coin flip um i don't know what it's going to be about maybe maybe it's a trivial coin flip at the beginning and the coin flips become more interesting as the story goes along but oh yeah i mean I, I, the it sounds like the coin flip the whole the whole title the flip side that's about the coin flip not about instagram yeah. um Anyway, that's that's where I direct you to to recraft that first chapter, and not because, I mean, I love the first chapter. I love the relationships in the first chapter. I think it just needs to be like, tweaked. Um, well, the thing that okay, and this is me being precious little artist, right? But the thing to me with the first chapter, I think personally, I think it has voice. I think it yeah. has charm. I think it shows a command of language. What I think for a publishing professional though, is they're gonna say exactly what you're saying right now. I still am not seeing my hook here. <laughs> like they're, they're, and, and 
my editor and an agent that I had a consultation with have both said something to the effect of, I'm a little leery of social media because I don't like to date a book. And so taking it out eliminates that problem. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, here's what, here's an idea that I'm going to suggest happens all the time with agents and editors. <laughs> like, and with all of us as readers, we have this initial gut response of not enough is happening. Like we need to speed up the plot, right? But it turns out that the real problem is actually character motivation and making it feel like everything matters. It, it, it's not because you can't, like the, the thing is, it has nothing to do with the car trip starting on page 47. That is not a problem in a car trip book. It is that things are going on in the story that feel like they're incidental. And so I, I just don't, I think that, that leave the car trip where it starts probably. And, and you may be surprised. And my guess is your agent will be surprised to read it and say, oh, it never had anything to do with that. Um, it, I just think that when you have characters who are grappling with things that are deeply important to them, it, you don't need to add in um, like sparkle and glitter uh, to try to drive the plot. She's going on this road trip for a real reason and you have to set that up. And again, I don't know if it's just gonna be on page 47 that she leaves on it, maybe it'll be on page 37, but I don't think that that's where you're gonna get all of your, your, your drop in your word count. My guess is taking out the social media stuff is gonna leave you actually with some room to, to add more so more character motivation. And that's the thing that's going to make it feel like the book is happening faster rather than like adding some more fun stuff or, you know, starting the action sooner. I, I just think sometimes we misread, agents and editors sometimes misread it. They, they have this easy response of it needs to happen faster um, because they're bored. Mm -hmm. Boredom but is they're the not problem. identifying why. They're like, <laughs> it just, it doesn't yeah, start. they're just bored. Yeah. And yeah, and and the funny thing is, sometimes you you know this as you as you try to talk to readers or, or to try to try to talk to beginning authors who start the book too late. You're like, here's the thing, I'm bored. You think that you're starting in media race, right? But I'm bored because I don't care about anything. So there there's the solution to the problem. You need to make sure your readers care about it more, yeah. not have more action. Well, it's funny because I have a, one of my classmates at um, VCFA actually is, um, was Brendan Reichs, who writes thrillers, YA thrillers, uh -huh. and so, um, and he does well, but he lives and dies by the idea of the action movie opening where you're, you know, and you're like right in the middle of the action. And I always laugh at him and I say, that's because you write thrillers. <laughs> don't and so I go I tend more toward if we're going to go with a film analogy I tend to go more toward the Blake Snyder model where, that we see in Save the Cat where he says you start in the ordinary world but on the day yes. where everything changes right yes. and that's where I like to start my stories I like a little snapshot of what is normal so then I can sense as an intuitive reader what the problem is when I feel it start to change and both of those things are those are completely valid ways to open stories it just depends on the kind of story that you're telling and so much of the transformation yeah. that happens in my stories is really internal and so um that's where I feel like I have to come up with these constructs of like what is this outward you know grail that they're in search of and hence you know well uh she really wants to go to like she really wants to know what family is right but it's like I need her to discover that so I gotta invent this other anyway it's but you're right yeah yeah yeah. the no, social I mean, media doesn't need it, to be there one, one of my problems with horror yeah, and this no, is I'm probably sorry, just I'm so floored by this <laughs> it doesn't need to be there like I it's like you already knew this some part of you already had the sense that I, I'm just like making sure that you see, that you listen to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's my job as a mentor is like make sure that people listen to themselves because I I genuinely think most people know the answers <laughs> once they're willing to like let go of attachment to the words already written, let go of, 
and and also sometimes let go of this idea that like your agent has I, I think you were right to actually resist your agent's idea oh that it should start faster that isn't the solution to the problem i think that's why you've been stuck is that your agent saying that was her attempt and this happens all the time that people tell people instead of telling them what the problem is which is i'm bored <laughs> right. right i'm bored until the car trip starts um that would have led you maybe to start asking different questions but she tried to fix the problem for you by saying cut it to where the car like that prescription ends up i think being problematic because we as writers that we have to listen to our internal sense of what the story is mm -hmm. and listening to other people tell us how to write isn't actually that helpful what, what is helpful is for people like alerting us to like this is already a problem that you know of and I'm just reflecting it back to you. You are the one telling me that it's a problem because as soon as I started talking to you about it, you were like, well, I had to invent it for this reason. And then I'm like, okay, well then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you're, that's exactly right. And it's funny because I have still, I think that's why I've been so resistant to yes. the idea of like, it has to start sooner. I'm like, no, it does. Yes. Like everything that's being set up emotionally and thematically pays off at the end and that payoff disappears if i'm eliminating any of that but i think you're also exactly correct that it's possible to seed all of those things the things that she really wants the things that she really needs um without using the social media that elim i mean that's probably going to take 10,000 words out of the story just like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it's just a super complicated way to do something that you can do much more simply. Yeah. Um, and get to the real heart of the story. I I think your story is going to be, the novel is going to be so much deeper and richer. And like I said, like universal and appealing to wider audiences when you take out that element that doesn't fit anyway. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so I'm done. <laughs> I hope it was helpful it and was. good luck to you on revising. Um, like, I hope that this is, that it, this makes you get excited about going back and like, ah, oh, now I know how to fix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like I'm idea. immediately, I'm already like, <laughs> good. I'm going to text my, my critique partner, Terry, and because <laughs> she is the plotter extraordinaire and be like, what if I said, the social media needs to come out of this book completely. Yeah. Now help me think of how to start chapter one and to be feeling that way versus like, that's super depressing and I don't want to make that change is good because that's yes. my brain going yes. like, yes, I know where to start working. Well, and it's also saying it still belongs to you. Like you, like, I think we resist when it feels like somebody else has taken our story away from us and they're prescribing to us the way it should be. Now I'm just saying like, like this is your story tell the deepest part of this story that you can tell that gets us excited again um as writers instead of oh you have to do for this way because the market says you need needs this and blah blah right. blah i don't want you to do that so yeah i think also what i need to do is um make an appointment because where we are like you can only get into the library by appointment so they can limit the number oh. of people in there is make an appointment and then go spend 45 minutes in the ya section looking at every ya road trip book i can find to see like when how they started yeah how are yeah, they yeah. that's a good idea how are they getting their character on the road and how many pages is it taking them to do it and that doesn't mean if like everyone does it by page 25 that I have to no. but I think it might give me some ideas of like reasons we might send someone on a road trip you know yeah yeah no I like that idea too um and I I often tell people to brainstorm like brainstorm 10 ideas and then throw those 10 away because <laughs> those are the boring ones right. and then like right and then do 10 more so that's what I would be about this I'd be like make a list of the most common things then throw those out and then and look at the more interesting yeah. ones <laughs> see yeah. what they what other yeah because part of the do. trick is the road trip has to be unsanctioned because no mom is going to be like yes 16 year old daughter go with your 16 year old well, friend for a week on the road like it's never going to happen I mean my mom so. did but that was back in the 80s <laughs> We don't do that anymore. No, we don't. So, so yeah, so I'll have to figure that out. But yeah, it'll be very interesting to look at like how are other YA authors approaching this 
and what, when I'm reading it, what feels organic to me in their books versus what feels contrived yeah. because I, a word we haven't used, but have really talked around is it's contrived. Like this social media yes. thing, it's contrived. It is contrived. contrived. I know it. I keep thinking, I'm like, after every beta read, I'm like, I hope they don't call me out on that, which tells me that I knew it wasn't working. And I'm just telling you again, like, I'm just mirroring back to you. You already knew the answer to this, but people were confusing you. I think, I mm. think that your advice from the agent confused you into thinking that the problem was other than the, the problem you kind of had the sense that it already was. So yeah. anyway. Good luck. And I was glad I was able to chat with you. This has been really helpful for me to put up so people can see what I do. Well, I super appreciate it. I'm happy to point people your way because honestly, like I have a lot of resources in terms of people and materials and I know where to go to find answers. And it's still after two and a half years of working on this stupid book, you reading the first 10 pages and going, you don't need the social media. <laughs> Is, is actually the correct answer after all of that. So, yeah, okay. So thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that.